Hi, my name is Tim from Fiorucci Fabrications here with Lowbrow Customs. And today I'll be showing you how to stick this really cool chopper ignition switch in your Frisco mounted sporty tank. It's tricky to find a good place to mount your ignition switch on your chopper, but if you wanted to try to do something different, Lowbrow sells a great kit called the Hummer Tank Accessory Kit, which allows you to mount your key switch directly into the top of your gas tank. The kit comes with this stamp piece that'll weld into the top. It comes with a tube that'll pass through the bottom for your wires to go directly out of the bottom of your gas tank, and a mounting plate that specifically mounts this five position key switch into the kit. You'll also have to purchase this bezel, which is sold separately, which holds the ignition switch into the stamped piece, and these screws that hold the ignition switch to the mounting plate. For this project, I'll be using Lowbrow's 2.5 gallon Frisco mounted sporty tank, which is only slightly bigger than your stock sporty tank, but it has some other great features like the slotted tabs to give you a little adjustment when you mount it on your backbone. Another great feature about this gas tank is in comparison to a stock tank, stock tanks have the petcock mounted in the middle of the tank because they sit more level, where on a Frisco tank, it's gonna be tilted up on your backbone, so the petcock mounted in the rear allows you to get every drop of gas from your gas tank. So let's get started. In a few short hours, you'll have a really cool chopper tank. Today I'm using a brand new gas tank, but most any other time that I modify a gas tank, it's always a used tank that's been run on a motorcycle. So every time I do something like this, I always purge the gas tank to get the fumes out. So to do this, you need to run exhaust fumes through your gas tank. Use your car, don't use your motorcycle, and don't do it in a garage, do it outside so you're not trapping the fumes in your garage. You're gonna wanna go outside, stick this onto the back of your exhaust of your car, and prop up your gas tank in such a way that it'll stay there because it's gonna to need to flow through there for about 20 to 30 minutes. And after you come inside, it's a good measure to get out your map gas torch and stick it down the filler neck just to make sure that you didn't miss any residual pockets of gas fumes. I can't stress how important this is. I had a good buddy once that blew up his gas tank just by drilling into it. So be careful and don't get ketchup on your face. Now that you have your gas tank ready to be worked on, the next step is to mount the key switch housing into the gas tank. We're using this kind of gas tank because it has the offset filler, so we won't have to actually move the filler neck to mount the key switch housing into the top of the gas tank. So you're gonna place the key switch housing in a spot that's visually pleasing, equally spaced, and kind of centered onto the gas tank with the cap and the housing in line with each other. And the key switch housing has a hole in the bottom of it, which will help you mark out where to drill your hole. Once you got your hole laid out, you're gonna indicate center. The best way to mark your center on sheet metal parts is to use an automatic center punch so you don't put a giant dent when you hit this thing with a hammer. After I mark my center, I like to start by just drilling a pilot hole. Okay, the next step is to cut your hole in the top of the tank. And if you've never used a hole saw on sheet metal before, the teeth are really coarse. And the sheet metal being so thin that you're gonna wanna run this drill at a high speed and not go real slow because the teeth are gonna grab really hard and they might distort and rip your sheet metal part out of your hand. And when you're drilling this hole, the best way to do it, since this gas tank isn't bolted to a motorcycle, and this is such a large hole, is to actually set the gas tank on the ground and straddle it, grabbing it with your knees so you have both hands free to drill your hole. There's not really a good way to clamp this down even to a table like this because the gas tank has so much shape into it. Okay, I wasn't kidding about straddling this thing, but once you think you got it in a good position where it's not gonna go anywhere, you're just gonna line up your pilot hole.
Now that the hole's cut, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is just give this thing a quick wipe. You don't have to spend too much time on it because we're gonna cut and drill more holes in here. Uh, you just wanna clean it off so you don't get splinters on your hands. And we also wanna get the sheet metal piece out of the inside of the gas tank. So it, this has a small magnet. It'd be better to use an extendable one. I can't seem to find mine right now, but this will be fine. Just reach in there, stick it in there. And grab your piece out. So we need to fit the housing into the hole. The hole's a little bit tight with the hole saw, so we need to open it up. I'll be using this straight uh, air grinder with a barrel sander on it just to clean up the edges a little bit to get the housing to drop in until these tangs are gonna hit. And then we're gonna have to just clearance for the tangs so this drops all the way in. You don't wanna press this in because it's gonna have to come in and out a couple times. Now that we have the housing fits all the way into these tiny tangs that bump out for the bezel, we're going to have to actually open up the hole just in that spot to get those to uh, slip in. I'm only going to grind out one for now to see if I can get this to snap in without clearancing both. I'm doing this so when I go to weld it later, it won't make it difficult to weld. So with your housing slipped in the hole, what you want to do is just kind of lightly eyeball with your Sharpie and try to figure out exactly how much material you need to uh, remove to get the tang to pass through. So I got one side to fit, but it doesn't seem like the uh, I'm going to be able to twist this to bypass uh, the other tank. So I'm going to have to just open that up just a little bit. I'm doing this all because I want to keep the fit as tight as possible and don't want to have big gaps to uh, deal with when I'm welding it later. So I've got this to fit where the tangs pass through into the gas tank. I have two little notches for clearance. Now that I got the housing to pass through this far, I realized that it has a slight taper on it and I'll actually need to open up the hole just a little bit more to get this to drop all the way down.
All right, I think that fits good enough. So to deburr this thing, I like to get one of these handy, uh, just hand deburring tools. Most hardware stores will have these and you just drag it on the inside of your part and without any sparks or lots of grinding, it'll clean your part up. There we go. Now let's see how that fits. Perfect. This part will work best if you install it on a flat portion of the gas tank. If your gas tank has a lot more shape, you're gonna have uh, larger gaps when you go to weld it in. So the next step is a little tricky because there's not a great way to tell you how to measure to figure out where the hole needs to go in the bottom of the tank for your wire tube. But luckily, there's a decent amount of play in the key switch housing to the wire tube. You want to line up the weld seam so it's easily visible from the side, centering in it uh, in that location. And we're going to just use a straight edge to mark, mark the center of the tube onto the side of the tank. Also, when lining this up, you don't want to have your tube going directly into your tunnel. When you're marking this line, you want to make sure that you're standing as parallel as possible from your gas tank using the mounting locations as a reference to your backbone. And if that was a straight line, you wanna be as perpendicular as possible from that straight line. Now that we have the guideline on the side of the tank, we're gonna use that just to give us a reference point of where to put the hole saw on the bottom. So I just take that and draw a straight line over perpendicular to the tunnel. And then I'm going to wanna to take my hole saw, which is 7 8 because the wire tube is also 7 8 So I'm gonna take my hole saw and just line that up a little away from the tunnel because like I said before, you don't want your wire tube dying straight into the tunnel. So just give you a little bit of a clearance off the tunnel. Take that on there, set it on and trace around it just for reference. So this tank has nice stampings in the bottom and you kind of remember where that, where your hole saw mark is in reference to the stamping on the bottom of the tank. And just for good measure, I'm gonna stick the key switch housing back in, put my wire tube back inside, and make sure that when I drill this hole, this tube is going to be able to get into the same location that the hole's drilled. If you look through the tube with a flashlight, you should be able to see inside to the stamping and see if that actually is going to be able to line up in the same spot on the bottom of your tank. After you drill your hole in the bottom, if you can't get this tube to line up uh, quite perfect, it's okay, you can, you can grind a little bit more out of the bottom or in the top, because this can weld in from the top, just to get things, these things to fit. This tube does not have to come out of the bottom perfectly straight. It can be a little bit of an angle. Hell, you can, get the, you can bend up some conduit and come all the way out of the back if you wanted to. It's only for wiring. So you're really only limited by your own creativity. So before you drill your pilot, you just wanna kind of find a center. Like I said before, there's some wiggle room, so it's not super critical, but it's just good practice. And just like before, you use your automatic center punch. You don't wanna put a giant dent into the tank. These automatic ones work the best on sheet metal. It's hard to get it back into the spot. And if you're a little off, that's okay. I'm gonna drill a small pilot just to help me line up the hole saw. Okay. This might not be so bad.
Okay, now we got the hole cut in the bottom and I'm gonna check to see that everything lines up. So put your housing back in, make sure it's seated. Then you're gonna grab your tube. fit pretty tight and that's what we want. Now you got your tube sticking onto the bottom. So I'm gonna take all this back apart and clean the inside and get all the metal shards out of it so we can finish weld this thing. So the bottom hole has a little bit of burrs on it. So I just use that burring tool that I showed you before and just drag that along and it cleans up the hole pretty nice and you even wanna to try to get out of the inside. Perfect. Now we're gonna to try to get all the shards out of the inside of the tank. Now that I have the, the hole for the wire tube in the bottom of the gas tank, the next step is to fit my housing in for the last time. In doing this, I'm going to need to set the orientation because after it's welded in, your key switch will only be able to fit one way. So you wanna make sure that it's in a spot that works for you on your gas tank. So I bolted the base plate to the bottom of the key switch and I'm gonna fit that into the housing. And then I'm going to take the gas tank and look at it visually from the top and twist the housing on the top of the gas tank to make sure that the switch is going to be in a place uh, mostly perpendicular to the backbone of the motorcycle. And once I got that lined up, I'm gonna take my Sharpie and you just draw a line on the edge of the housing and the top of your tank. So the way I have this fit right now, it doesn't move. I have the whole fit really tight, but if you don't get the hole lined up super tight, after you take everything out and you get your welder out, this might move around. So you want to mark it so you know exactly where it's going to be. So when you put the tack there and this is all finished up and you put your key switch back in, that everything fits exactly how you wanted it to. Okay, I just want to tack this into place just so it doesn't move when I fit everything else in. I'm not going to fully weld it right now. You just want to put some good tack so this is pretty rigid on the, uh, the shell of the gas tank. on all four sides should do. Why are welders nuts? They live their lives all day every day alone in the dark. The next step is to cut this down closer to size. So we're going to stick the tube back in, get it to fit. You're going to go all the way flush, just about with the inside of the housing. And holding that flush, you're gonna to wanna to put a mark on your tube. And you, you can be generous to leave some, you don't have to mark it super exact. Cause we're just gonna cut this close and then finish grind it uh, after it's tacked in.
Okay, now that we have our tube cut a little bit closer to size, we're gonna fit this back together and I'm gonna tack it in from the top. Okay, now that we have everything fit, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this into the bottom. Before I do so, uh, since we don't have like a good level surface for the tank to sit on, uh, you don't want this thing rolling around while you weld. So I actually hook up a ground right to the gas tank. So even if this teeter totters and stuff, we're not gonna arc from the table to the top of the tank and potentially blow a hole in your gas tank. It, those things are tricky and kind of hard to fix. So just get yourself some wire and a couple clamps from your, your weld shop and actually make up a short lead just for this purpose if uh, you plan on doing this more than just once. Okay, before I weld this up, I'm just gonna tack all four corners so it doesn't uh, potentially give me a bigger gap anywhere. Now that we have that tacked, I'm gonna get a couple more tacks on the top because I just fused those earlier. And once you get your gas tank to this stage where everything's tacked in, you're done with the fab and the only thing left to do is to finish weld it up and pressure test. And now it's time to finish weld. Uh, before we do that, you might wanna get a few more tacks in places just because it's so thin that uh, things tend to move around once you start adding heat to it. So I do like to add tacks anywhere that it's touching just so that um, as you're welding around, it doesn't move away. So I start off with all the spots that it's touching and sometimes after I get those welded, I like to also add filler to where I have gaps, but you might have to switch to a different size rod uh, to get those gaps. I started off welding with 035, just steel rod, and now I've switched to the 1 steel rod. And just get some good amount of tacks on there because we're also going to, they call it staggered intermittent welding. You're not going to just weld this all the way around. You're going to, uh, it's the same thing if you've ever heard somebody say stitch weld it. It's where you just kind of jump around because you have to keep the heat down while you're welding on something this thin. If not, you don't want your gas tank to like turn into a potato chip when you're done. Get a couple more over here. Okay, now I gotta jump down into the bottom and I'm gonna try to, I actually, I'm just gonna weld this up. So on the bottom, I'm. It, I have a nice uh, tight fit, so I'm able to just weld this up with the 035 rod. And it's so small and there's so much shape down here that I'm not gonna go all the way around, but I'm just gonna be able to weld this up. I don't give it time to let it cool down, but I like to weld this in four sections and not just go straight around the tube.
Welding on the other side, I like to uh, use my clamp again, just because when I'm welding on it, it's, it might move around a little bit, like I said before, and you don't want a bunch of arcs right on the top of your tank. I'm adding just a couple more tacks. Now everything's uh, in place. I got a little bit more of a gap on the bottom than I did at the top. So I'm just making sure that as I go around, the gaps aren't gonna get any larger, which is the purpose of all the tacks. I did on the uh, inside of the housing. I don't go all the way around. I kind of do it in a couple different passes. This top hole is the most important to uh, stagger your welds. Maybe only weld a little bit at a time across from each other. You don't want to go all the way around just in one pass because uh, your sheet metal could really get warped. So uh, when I weld something like this, see I have so many tacks all the way around. I'll uh, pick a spot, weld this between the tacks, and then I go uh, adjacent to it. And then kind of like if you were tightening your lug nuts on your car and just do like a star pattern around and maybe give it a little time to cool down depending on how fast you're moving while you're welding. You might want to give it a little bit of the time so that the sheet metal isn't getting too hot so it's going to really distort and move out of shape. Luckily this is in a spot where it has quite a bit of shape so it should be really strong and able to support the heat. Once you get that kind of shape in there, there's no way to really get it out without cutting the bottom out or having a bunch of Bondo. And you, with using this, you don't have a lot of room for Bondo. So uh, do the best you can and just take your time moving around welding. One more thing, I would suggest welding the spots where you have the tightest fit first and welding in the areas that there are gaps after the tight fit spots are welded. It'll distort the least if you weld where you have like no gap than if you have gaps. the spots with bigger gaps I switched again to the 1 16th rod uh, just to help fill that in. As I said before I'm jumping around kind of in a star pattern just so I spread the heat out as evenly as possible as I'm welding this up. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I like to pulse on thin material. It's just where I'm fluctuating on the pedal a little bit. And it just helps me add the perfect amount of filler each time.
little tricky by the filling neck. Just be careful. Gotta let this sucker cool down and then we're gonna put everything back in. Now that everything was welded up, I tried to put the switch and the bezel on and I realized that you actually need to weld the mounting tab into the housing. This is the first time I've ever used this kit and I was unaware, so we're gonna do that now. So when you're welding this in, I wanna put a couple tacks in the middle so it does, doesn't have any place to shift, and then we're gonna tack in all four corners. Again, we'll do this just barehanded. Once you get one fusion in there, it'll be a lot easier not to use filler, but you wanna make sure to hold it down just so it's going to sit flat in the end. Once you get a couple tacks, now we're gonna tack the corners. Okay, now that we have that mounting tab tacked in, we're going to assemble the key switch with the bezel and just check out how it looks. So the easiest way to assemble this is to put your screws into the holes first and then you can actually hold the switch as kind of a pilot. And then you wanna start each one going around because they're straight heads to be more original like an original Hummer switch, which makes them a little bit more tricky to get to start. Okay, once you got that bolted down, you grab your bezel, and we're gonna just pop that in there. And we're just checking fitment, and that's it. Basically, the last step would be to pressure test this thing, which Tyler's gonna be doing a video on, on a stock Triumph tank, and you can see exactly how that's done, but definitely pressure test it before you send it off to paint. But this thing, this baby's basically ready for paint, and it looks great, I really liked this kit. It was pretty plug and play for a welding job, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So if you like this kit, and you like this video, and you want to see more videos and parts like it, please visit lowbrowcustoms.com. Pockets of fumes. Science. <laughs> Science. 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 All right, well, let's get this. <laughs> Why can't I even do that? <laughs> God, Mikey. Don't make me laugh, dude. All right, now let's get to work. I promise it'll be a lot easier than me getting through this monologue. Like I said before, you're only limited by your own creativity. See you next time. Should we do that part again?